I've, at this point, I have christened the trail four times now. I'm out of toilet paper. I, I gotta get home. I cannot wake the monster again. This is getting bad. That was me a couple months ago. This is me today. Welcome to Kings Canyon. We are here at Kings Canyon Trailhead, headed towards Wasson Peak. I chose to hike here um, and shoot this video here for two reasons. One, I am so proud to say, no toilet, no problem. And number two, speaking of number two, that I'm able to hike this peak without having to stop 14 times. And I don't mean like a water snack stop, I mean like a drop your pants now, drop some bombs and pray to God you brought enough toilet paper stop. Um, I've hiked this before and that's exactly what it was like and I've come a long way from, from that point. Disclaimer, if you didn't pick up from reason number one, um, we're gonna be talking a lot about poop. We're gonna be talking a lot about toilet times. And if you are intuitive, or you just read the title, yes, we're talking about parasites today, because guess what? I had one, and it was not pretty. If you're not interested in an intriguing story about a parasite, well then, hopefully you like this trail, because it's absolutely gorgeous. So I believe I picked up this parasite when I was a backpacking guide in Colorado. Um, Parasites are a lot more prevalent than you would think and especially in like the outdoor world and the travel world <laughs> So it happened about a year ago And um, I left the backpacking gig came to Dallas and As I started working uh, my mornings got worse and worse so I Would wake up in the morning. I would try and go run um, but it just, it was really difficult to number one, get out of bed, and number two, um, actually finish a run. Which, for me, that's kind of uncanny. Um, I'm usually able to whip out five miles daily and um, not think anything of it. I'd get to the office, and at the office, I'd start my day, I'd be in a positive mood, happy, and then, the monster would awake and bathroom times would get real ugly. I'd probably spend the, the vast majority of my morning just like in the bathroom getting rid of literally everything in my body. And you would think like, oh wow, that's great. You probably lost a lot of weight. No, I gained a solid 15 pounds during this process. So. This is not, the parasite is not something to play around with, okay? It, it'll destroy you in a lot of different ways. <laughs> I'm still dealing with the aftermath, even after a year. The other side of that was the mental side. So, as the day progressed at work, I would start like positive, excited. Yay, another day of work, okay. Yeah, I'm working in an office, but it's okay, I have a job, and I'm glad I do. We're gonna make the most of this. Let's see who we can talk to today. Um, by the end of the day, I, I, I just hated my life. That's a strong word for sure, but it's necessary to describe like what was going on mentally. Um, um, I'd get home from work and I'd be exhausted and just in a real pissy mood. Um, I didn't wanna talk to anyone. I didn't wanna do anything. So I would pretty much just spend the time I had at home, I would just sit on the couch. I wouldn't have the TV on, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be on my phone. I would just sit on the couch and stare and think negative thoughts and be sad and be angry. Um, and a lot of times, like, there was really no cause to be angry or sad. I'm having these like physical and mental issues and I'm thinking to myself for a while there like, oh, it's just my fault, like I, how can I change my diet? What can I do differently? Man, these runs are really kicking my butt. Maybe I'm just really out of shape. 
a couple of other physical things that started happening as this progressed. Not only was I spending hours on the toilet, my, every time I ate, I would, it would hurt number one. It'd give me this like acidy feel in my stomach. And then I would bloat like I was nine months pregnant about to pop out a child. Not just one, like two twins, maybe even triplets. My stomach would get so huge and it wasn't just food that would do it. Sometimes even water would bloat me. And at that point I was like, hmm, I know this is not normal. So I guess I should go see a doctor. So I go to the doctor and they do some blood tests and I wait to see what the results are. And in the meantime, I start losing like feeling in these two fingers, my left hand. Um, and I start like getting blurry vision in my left eye. And so I'm like, what the heck? So I go to the eye doctor to make sure like my vision's good. I don't have some scary tumor or so, I don't know. They tell me, oh yeah, you're good. Nothing, no problems there. About that time, I get my results back and the doctor looks at them and tells me like, okay, there's a couple things that are low, a couple things that are off, but nothing major. Um, but you talk about your stomach and all these issues. Let's, let's give you a parasite test and see. So I said, yeah, let's let me poop in a cup, please. So, I poop in a cup and it comes back. And what do you know? I got a parasite. The fun part is, um, this specific parasite that I have called the, I don't know. Yeah, there's actually not much medical literature on it. So, good luck. I um, started, I got on some antibiotics and started to try and kill this parasite. So, pooped in a cup again. whoop de doo Wait a while, wait a while. Comes back, no parasite, you're good. Right on, cool. So tell me why I still feel like crap. Pun intended. So yeah, I'm back at the doctor, like, what the heck is wrong with me? Except it's not that kind because I'm still a crazy person in my head. And I'm like, yo, I'm not leaving until you tell me everything I need to know. Whether she actually didn't know or whether she just wanted to get rid of me was like, okay, um, we're gonna send you to um, a gastro doctor and we're gonna do a colonoscopy and endoscopy. Mmm, I am 22. What? Okay, all right, sure. At this point, I'm like, you, you want to send me to Mars for three years to do a study on me? Do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's get this thing over with. Like, I want to figure out what's going on because my life is miserable right now. And it's like I'm on an eternal period with eternal PMS, which I didn't even want to be around me. The GI doctor was kind of like, well, I guess you just have IBS. And I'm like... I be, no, um, that I understand is a blanket statement for, we don't know what's going on with you. And when I said that, he was like, yeah, you're pretty much right. I'm like, mm, well, that's not very helpful now, is it? Like, so what can we do from here? And he's like, well, I don't know. So I see myself as a holistic person who really tries to find a way to not have a lot of medication and not take a lot of antibiotics. Obviously in this case, to get rid of the parasite I had to, but um, I really believe in the power of prayer and I also believe that the food that we eat really does impact how we feel on the inside and what we look like on the outside. I'm also the person who believes in chiropractors and especially now more than ever. The chiropractor that I started seeing is also an MD, so she is highly qualified, overqualified, um, 
and certainly not all chiropractors are created equally, but this is where the story starts to turn for the better and the light at the end of the tunnel starts to be seen a lot more clearly. So I went in for my initial screening. She spent like three and a half hours figuring out the entirety of my medical history. From there she said, okay, next time you come back, I'll have a plan, I think I know what we need to do. So I was like, what? You have a plan? What world am I in? I go in the next time and basically she tells me this. The lining of your stomach is one cell thick and when it's hammered on and hammered on and hammered on, it is, it's super strong, but it starts to go like this and there starts to get little holes in it and this cell wall and when that happens the food that you're eating um, starts getting into that and it can go straight to your bloodstream and cause a lot of fatigue. I'm going to talk more about how I've remedied what's going on in the video next week so that's going to be part two because this has already gone on far too long. So I was super heavy probiotic for the first week on top of gut food, which is to basically replenish and help rebuild that cell wall so that it can be stronger and have no gaps. Um, and then after that, I was supposed to go on another different probiotic that was really heavy, but um, not as strong. It gets worse before it gets better. I go on a, basically a two month long van trip. There's videos of it. It was a fun time, however, here is what it actually looked like the majority of the time. No signs of movement. I am moving. Sweet, sweet David put up with me in close quarters for two months being cranky, angry, sad. I would cry for no reason, still. And a lot of the days I honestly just slept in the back of the van and I read a lot and I looked out the window a lot, but I really couldn't do much. You know, we were in the van. I wasn't eating a lot of meat. I had like eggs in the morning. Sometimes I would have oatmeal, corn tortilla chips, and salsa. So I ate a ton of green apples, a lot of almonds. From time to time, we'd have like a can of chicken. I would have like brown rice and quinoa in the packet sometimes. So yeah, I mean, we ate, we ate really well. We had a fridge, I ate a lot of yogurt. So I was getting enough protein, I thought. Um, but my symptoms just kind of worsened. So I went back to the chiropractor, explained I had seen no improvement. We took some more tests. Two weeks later, I'm back in Dallas in flight attendant training, my first weekend, and I have to check myself into the ER.